This course provides a working set of analysis data files, meshes, contour plots, and time histories to demonstrate the use of FLAC 3D to conduct advanced three-dimensional seismic analysis of a zoned embankment dam with rock abutments. This course is intended for experienced geotechnical analysts with significant familiarity with FLAC 2D, FLAC 3D, or previous versions of FLAC such as FLAC 8.1. In this video, part one, a formal presentation of the modeling approach and analysis steps are given. In the next video, part two, a more informal commentary of the FLAC 3D project will be provided. Note that in this course that although all data files used will be presented and the overall structure discussed, the reason behind specific modeling and scripting decisions, a critical aspect in an analysis, are missing and outside the scope and time allowed in this course. To better understand such critical modeling decisions, additional resources should be sought at the Itasca Software Academy through Itasca Software Documents or other resources or trainings. Let us now begin with part one in which a formal description of the problem analyzed is given. The problem analyzed in this course is that of a zoned embankment dam, 15.2 meters in height with a three to one upstream slope and a 2.5 to one downstream slope. The reservoir level to be modeled is 1.8 meters below the crest. The impervious cohesive core extends down to the bedrock, whereas the shells are underlined by a 4 meter thick layer of cohesionless alluvium. The alluvium width at the surface is 30 meters. The bedrock abutment rises from the canyon base at 1 to 1 slopes. Two numerical meshes were developed for potential use. Both meshes were developed with Rhino 3D and Griddle. The first numerical mesh is composed of 36,985 numerical zones, and although not sufficiently refined for accurate wave propagation or to model critical gradients and properties in response, the model can run with the earthquake record in only several hours while highlighting the overall analysis sequence. In contrast, the second numerical mesh has 192,419 numerical zones and was designed to more accurately model wave propagation and other considerations, but because of the substantial increase in number of zones, the model takes several days to run the earthquake record with a moderately powerful desktop computer. Other than different tolerances for conducting the steady state fluid flow analysis, the analysis files for the two models are identical. We now shift to discuss the constitutive modeling parameters used, material parameters selected, and the overall analysis sequence. First, we begin by describing the sole constitutive models used during the earthquake shaking analysis. In the embankment material, the more cooler model with the hysteretic damping add-on is used to capture soil yielding in either drained or undrained conditions, as well as degradation in stiffness and increases in damping ratio with earthquake-induced strains. In the alluvium, the P2P sand effective stress model is used to capture the expected changes in excess pore pressure during earthquake shaking and the associated reduction in stiffness, strength, and accumulated strains. The isotropic elastic model is used in the stiff bedrock material. General material properties used in the model are shown for the shell, core, alluvium, and bedrock. Parameters listed include moist unit weight, saturated unit weight, shear wave velocity at a vertical effective stress of one atmosphere, exponent coefficient m that allows the shear wave velocity to vary with effective stress, drain plus moles ratio, horizontal permeability, and vertical permeability. More modeling specific parameters are presented next. The shell material is modeled to behave drained before and during earthquake shaking. The drain shear strength is selected to relate only to the drain friction angle, representative of a gravelly shell that varies with minimum principal effective stress as shown. The associated drain shear strength assigned in the model is calculated using the equation S equals maximum principal effective stress plus minimum principal effective stress divided by 2 times the sine of the drain friction angle. Note that this shear strength S will be equal to the cohesion parameter in the more cooler model and will be calculated zone by zone based on the pre-earthquake state of stress. Correspondingly, the friction angle parameter in the more cooler model is set to zero. The hardened Durfitz model was chosen for the hysteretic model and gamma ref set equal to 0 0.05096 to capture the EPRI 1993 GeoRigi max and damping curves that represent depths between 6 and 15 meters. The equation S equals the maximum principal effective stress plus the minimum principal effective stress divided by 2 times the sine of the drain friction angle represents the radius of the Mohr circle at initial yield, that is the red circle, with elastic response under simple shear loading with shear stress SA, a state of stress slightly lower than that which includes the impacts of principal stress rotation. 
The core material is drained before the earthquake, and then during earthquake loading, the core material is modeled to behave drained above the phreatic surface and undrained below the phreatic surface. The drain shear strength is a function of the drain friction angle and cohesion, whereas the undrained shear strength is a function of the undrained shear strength ratio, which is a function of the vertical effective stress. The hardened diffus model was chosen for the hysteretic model, and a gamma ref equal to 0.1243 was selected to capture the Vosetic and Dobry 1991 G over G max and damping curves for a PI equal to 30. The drain strength of the core material is strength equals the drain cohesion times the cosine of the drain friction angle plus the maximum principal effective stress plus the minimum principal effective stress divided by 2 times the sine of the drain friction angle. The value of S represents the radius of the Mohr circle at initial yield with elastic response under simple shear loading. The undrained shear strength of the core is S equals undrained shear strength divided by the vertical effective stress times the vertical effective stress. Note that this shear strength S will be equal to the cohesion parameter in the Mohr Coulomb model and will be calculated zone by zone based on the pre-earthquake state of stress. Correspondingly, the friction angle parameter in the Mohr Coulomb model is set to zero. Before the earthquake, the alluvium is drained with a drain friction angle of 30 degrees. During the earthquake, changes in excess pore pressure during shaking need to be modeled, as well as the associated reduction in stiffness, strength, and accumulated strains. The alluvium will be modeled as a sandy soil with a density representative of normalized standard penetration resistant N160 equal to 16. At this N160, the associated residual strength will be equal to 31.1 kPa. The P2P sand model will be used to model the cyclic mobility liquefaction response during shaking. The primary parameter for the P2P sand constitutive model is the relative density and will be selected as 0.59. The residual shear strength is not a material parameter in the P2P sand model, but is used in a post earthquake analysis with a more cool model. The analysis sequence is composed of nine analysis steps separated into nine data files. In the first analysis step, geostatic stresses are calculated without the impacts of the reservoir. A simple modeling approach is used where mechanical equilibrium is determined for the whole model with drained Mohr Coulomb response. With the state of stress determined, the second analysis step checks the ratio of the horizontal to vertical effective stresses and are attempted to be adjusted if unrealistic. In the third analysis step, a seepage analysis is conducted to determine the pore water pressures and the effective stresses and densities are updated. With the state of stress updated, the fourth analysis step checks the ratio of the horizontal to vertical effective stresses and are attempted to be adjusted if unrealistic. Next, starting in the fifth analysis step, the model conditions are transitioned for the dynamic analysis. First, in this fifth analysis step, the constitutive model parameters are updated in the embankment to represent either drained or undrained conditions. In the alluvium, the P2P sand model is applied. Elastic response is used in the bedrock. Mechanical equilibrium of the model is determined again. In the sixth analysis step, the ratio of the horizontal to vertical effective stresses is checked again and attempted to be adjusted if unrealistic. In the seventh analysis step, the boundary conditions and damping characteristics of the model are changed. The eighth analysis step corresponds to the actual analysis step in which the dynamic response with the earthquake motion is determined. Finally, in the final ninth analysis step, additional gravity-driven deformations accumulated are determined if portions of the alluvium reach the residual shear strength. This completes the formal description of the problem analyzed. In part two, a more informal commentary of the FLAC3D project will be provided.